Hi everyone, this is the Farming Sims. I'm on East Finland, New Jersey for our Supply Chain Crisis Challenge. It's November, almost the end of the year and uh, there's not much left to do but uh, there's a few jobs still that I really need to uh, get finished before winter starts. So uh, I think what uh, I'll start with is uh, just let you know that the potato uh, factory here has been making a heap of pig food and uh, we've got some stored up the back up there. There's one con well, there's one uh, harvest field uh, left to do and it's just come up as a contract actually. I've been waiting for it to uh, to finish off the harvest for the year. So this is the last field. So I think what I'm going to do is I, I was going to plant um, and roll this with some fertilizing. But seeing that just popped up, I think I will jump in the harvester. Uh, I'll run up the top up there and I'll uh, So it's a canola field, and uh, canola uh, has been processed into canola oil and has been sold this month. In fact, November is the high price, so there'll probably only be a couple of thousand litres. Yeah, probably only a few thousand litres left over from this contract, so I might actually be able to get it processed and sold off immediately. Um, we have sold all of our products for this month that we need to. Next month, uh, December, I think we've got a few more to sell off. Um, but it will be quiet over winter. All we'll have is the animals to look after and the animals to look after and uh, some products to sell. So um, it, I do need to get onto the corn oil production, um, which I haven't actually started yet. But I've been putting it off waiting for this canola field. Is this it here? It is, isn't it? So uh, the last harvest for year, well we're halfway through year three, because we play from August to August. Uh, August is the only time you can buy new equipment and supplies from the store. Uh, we're self-sufficient, so uh, we're good there. We actually have all the animal pens in now, so we are also got that box checked. And the last thing we need to do is uh, just buy, uh, we're going to buy the dairy actually. We should buy the dairy this month. I probably should do it now and get uh, the milk that we've, the milk that we've collected in the, um, in the cow barn. Um, that's really starting to build up. They're not adults yet, but they're still producing a decent amount of milk. was straight all the way down but there's an extra bit there here let's put cruise control on and I think that's lined up 
Let's actually look at the animals. And we'll scroll down to the cows. We have 33,000 litres of milk. Um, I am leaving the slurry and the manure until the end of the month. I would like to compare um, how much the pig, I, I know how much the pigs have been making month to month because they've been fairly consistent. But I thought what I'd do is do a straight comparison with the with the 100 cows we have compared to the 350 pigs. So I've got a feeling this month the cows will actually produce more. In fact, I could look at that now. Slurry is 12. It doesn't show us the manure. Um, and slurry is 10 on the pigs. So yeah, they've taken over. Um, and we've been getting around about 20,000 consistently on the pigs. So 12, where we're almost halfway through the month. We're playing 21 days and we're on day nine. So, you know, we're almost halfway through the month. So, yeah, we, we'll probably exceed 20,000 slurry this month. And that's because I've been selling um, the young pigs and holding on to some of the older pigs recently just to build up the um, uh, the extra the extra product and I've been do doing the same with the with the the sheep with the wool uh, but the uh, the cows are doing really well actually I'm quite surprised 100 cows how well they go um, yeah we can we can hold 250 so and they're eating a lot of feed too you know I wasn't sure how much feed they would take but uh, what did I put in there 50,000 litres we're down to 12 so four months ago when we had 25 I put 50,000 litres in and then we doubled to 50 and then 75 and now we've got 100 but it, obviously, ah, obviously at first we uh, it wasn't using much food for the 25. But uh, it's used uh, almost 30, 40, almost 40,000 litres. And you could, you could dice that up into one month of 25 and then two 25s for the second month, so that's three. And then 325s is 6. And then 425s is 10. So there's been... There's been um, about 4,000 litres of feed eaten for each 25 cow sets each month. There's been a total of 10. That's about 40,000 litres, so... Yeah, like I said, it's, it's, it was only like 4,000 when I first started, but I knew that that would take off. And now it's more like uh, 20,000 this month that they've eaten. Or they will eat by the, by the time we get to the end of this month. So I need to sort that out as well. Uh, I do have plenty of feed stored up, about 160,000, I think. But it's, yeah, so if they're eating 20 a month at the moment, then uh, what do I need for the year? 240,000? And then they'll start breeding. Yeah, we'll have calves in about a year's time. So I need to sort out the animals, I need to sell some sheep, I need to sell some pigs. Uh, I need to put some feed into the cows. 
I need to buy the dairy. I need to get that process running, deliver that milk. How much milk was there again? 33,000 milk. We should have done that last month. My bad. My bad. I wanted to build up a little bit of milk, but it's a very busy time of the year, you know, um, in harvest season. So if I go back to the... Yeah, we're just we're coming to the end, but it's it's a pretty full calendar. If you look at the calendar, there isn't many breaks in it, to be honest. Some calendars just have a very short window for seeding, and then a, a distinct seeding window, sowing window, and then um, a distinct harvest window. But um, here in New Jersey, it is there, there is something happening almost all year round except for winter. Um, yeah, so even though I feel like the month is almost over and I've got I've got all of our fields almost almost ready. If I show you the map, if I turn on mulching, let's get rid of stones because that just so Let's just check here. Each of the purple fields starting up the top left, field one through the farm, going straight down to the bottom, down to 24, and then going across. All those fields that are purple are ours. And uh, they've all been harvested uh, and grass cut for this month. And then um, Whoa, is that full? No, that was just me hitting the cruise control and uh, getting the triple button hit. The timing wrong on it. Let's try that again. L1, R1, and circle. And sometimes I just hit the circle, which stops the harvest, or stops, stops the header. We're at 96%. So I should organise a trailer here. I'll bring the truck up. This is a little bit bigger than what I thought this field. We might get we might get a little bit off this field. Is that a hundred percent? No. That is. Pop that pipe out. We'll leave it running. I'll, uh, I'll just go and get the truck. Here we are. Oh, there's corn in it. Why is there corn in it? That's a little strange. That's left over from our cornfield. Very strange. Okay. Um, let's find out which trailer's got it. The front trailer does. Uh, I can tell you that's off our own field. And Our ratio for the pig food is slightly off. We're lacking on the base food a little bit. Um, it's important to keep the ratios um, even. Got a little bit of lag here. I'll show you what I mean. Um, on the pig food, it's really important to get the ratios of the of the four categories um, fairly even. So, uh, fifty percent of uh, the total that it can hold, which is eighty five, fifty percent is um, forty two and a half. 
and 25% is 21, 20% is about 17, and 5% of 85 is about four, it's about 4,000 liters. So um, uh, that was 42, 21, 17, and four. And uh, we're a little bit short on the, on, on the base food, a little bit short on the protein as well. Um, but if you get them just right and then switch over to pig food, the pig food will keep the ratios for you intact. So when you drop pig food in there, it, it breaks the pig food up into those, into those, uh, Uh, into those categories and so I was putting a little bit of corn in there the other day so I thought I put it all in but it must have actually filled the pen to 85 and I didn't realize and left a little bit in there so that's where that's I'm pretty sure that's where that came from Yeah, so I've got the usual animal work to do, and with the um, with the cows now actually producing and eating, I'll need to make sure I, I have them in the cycle, the monthly cycle, to uh, check in on their feed and. And we'll get that milk processing. We'll. We have made a little bit of money this month uh, while this is filling and we'll turn the truck off. While this is filling I can let you know that we had uh, in August we took a massive loan to fast track the end of the game here. We were going to play for a little bit longer but um, with, uh, with only Murphy and I playing now, we decided that uh, we should uh, bring the challenge to an end. We basically um, wanted to get some upgraded equipment and get the cow barn in quickly. We could have just saved up and did that, but then we wouldn't have played with the cows in game as such. We would have just bought the cows and then said challenge complete so in this scenario the the banks have come back to the town lent us 1.7 million dollars putting the cows in was about a million dollars and we also spent about 700,000 on on land oh sorry well yes yeah, some on land um, and some on new equipment and that was about 700,000 mixed together between the two. Uh, so we got our upgraded equipment a little earlier than what we normally would have. And we got a little bit extra land. And um, that's put us in uh, a really good position to finish the game off this year. Not that I really wanted to finish it off, but we're, we're starting... Um, a new project uh, uh, myself Murphy and Mikey and we also are putting up a, a new M Murphy's putting together a, a new idea for for the farmers group here um, on this server with Cobbler and Wasteland um, included on, on our on the first server that we started playing as a group um, but we also have uh, Edgewater which has just started so with, with that in mind we thought uh, it might be a good time to bring the group back together and uh, start a new project here the problem is over time 
if it's easy to um, get mixed up with a version of the map that you're using, especially if you remove the map off your, off your console, it's really dangerous to do because if there's an update and it's a save game update, you can't you can't then go and download the um, that version because we've we've stayed at version 1.2. The game's up to 1.3.2 on the map and so if anyone goes and downloads that map now they they can't use that to get into the server it's one of the downsides of um of new save game updates uh, and and deleting the map off your off your console so there, there are a few players that well, that can't get in anymore. But to be honest, uh, there are a few players that um, I don't think we're all that interested in it. So we'll try something different. Um, maybe uh, we'll probably go back to running our own farms. Everyone thought it was a good idea to try a co-op where there wasn't as much pressure on you to be online on a regular basis every week it was easy to miss a planting season or a harvest season um, which would kind of ruin your game to a certain extent if you miss planting season um, yeah you're screwed for the year basically uh, or be so far behind that um, it'd be easy to lose interest in so we thought that co-op would be more suitable to us all as busy in real life, but uh, it really didn't turn out that way. I think I think running your own farm it just gives you that it gives you the control over it, and I guess we're all we're all guilty of just wanting to have control of our games nothing wrong with that um, and I guess in in this instance the control had been taken away from everybody to a certain extent the fact that you couldn't buy anything other than secondhand equipment between August and August meant you lost a lot of freedom um, with what you could do with the farm and we were struggling with cash to begin with as well like we started with almost nothing basically nothing um, once we bought our equipment once we bought our supplies uh, we didn't we didn't have a whole heap of land and we didn't have any cash we didn't have the ability to take a loan till now third year um, and so that takes a lot of control out of your day-to-day -day gameplay, what choices you can make. For instance, the only choice you can make is second-hand store. So, um, what's in the second-hand store today? Nice front loader. Uh, too small, even when we first started, 2.5 meter um, cultivator. No, we started with a four meter cultivator, the little case, the little uh, case cultivator, that's pretty good, about $5,000, four meters, only needs about 80 horsepower or something, 50 horsepower maybe. Um, a trailer for sugarcane nope and we've got a shallow cultivator five meters ten thousand dollars that's not too bad i guess i mean 180 horsepower though for five meter cultivator that's probably the going rate We did upgrade to a five meter cultivator the, the 
the Lincoln and then we've upgraded recently to a disc the big disc um, what have we got in this this car here we've got the speed tiller 475 12.5 meters and uh, 550 horsepower but we've got the uh, the power shift 9390 to pull at 625 horsepower so we don't have a problem with horsepower with that and we we bought that specifically for the disc arrow and the plow the plow needs uh, 310 horsepower oh, he's missed the line again the plow needs 310 horsepower which means um, it's a little bit higher than um, than our 7150 7150 can only has 250 horsepower so that's a little bit lacking on the plow it can actually pull it it's just a little slower but um, yeah so you don't have the freedom to just go and buy what you want from the store there's a supply chain um, crisis at the moment you cannot just you can't get orders in you have to you have to let the store know what you're after and they've got to hunt around for it um, the only time you can guarantee um, supplies is in August um, and uh, but we can we can take anything from the second hand store and uh, like I said we've been self-sufficient for a while now since the start of last year the first thing Murphy did was put the seed production in um, around the same time that all the wheat came in so uh, it only really took us a year to become self-sufficient That's why I focused on the pigs so heavily. First year, let us get the fertilizer. So uh, just going back to the map again, like I said, we've got uh, everything mulched. And if I go back to crops, I can pick grass. And now you can see that uh, all the fields of ours are planted with grass now. That's our, that's our winter cover crop um, uh, that we'll cut in the spring and uh, you'll be able to see that our grass is growing yes and what i really want to check is our there's nothing that needs plowing there is some lime required around the map just here so we'll have to be careful of that I need to do that and these fields are bugged out by the way one two and three they are uh, they need rolling so what's happened is is they've been they've been done as sewing contracts and you can tell that uh, we did those contracts and I can I can also tell you that I did them specifically um, and I've left a line on each of them where I've completed the contract before actually seeding the entire field but what you can see here is is that the section that I left that I didn't seed 
is the only section that was rolled. The entire area that I did seed has not been rolled by the AI. Now, they're the only three fields that have ever been um, done as a sewing contract on the map. We don't get sewing contracts at all. The uh, the AI does all all the um, all of the sewing. Well, the contracts just don't come up. It just automatically gets planted with the crop as soon as it clicks over to the next month. So you might ask, well, how did you get those three sewing contracts if they just automatically get done at the start of each month? And the only way for it to happen is for the harvest to happen in, um, in the planting window for canola barley or wheat sowing late sowing august september october so for example um one of those fields was um one of those fields was uh, a sorghum field i harvested the sorghum i then did the cultivating contract i then got the sowing contract to plant wheat or barley, whichever one it was. And then, um, yeah, and then I got the fertilizing contract as well. But because the harvesting and the seeding happened in the same month, it actually gave me the contract. But uh, if, if the, the if the field was had needed to wait for the seeding window it would have just done it automatically once we reached that window but because the window was open in exactly the same month that the that the harvest was done that's the only way you can get a seeding contract on on uh east finland all other all other seeding contracts just get done by the ai but there's this weird thing that happens where the AI then doesn't, or does roll it, it just rolls the one section that I didn't plant, which makes absolutely no sense. If anything, I would have thought it was the other way around. It would have rolled the entire area that I planted and missed rolling on the, on the section that I didn't. But it's actually reverse of that. It's very strange. Very strange. Yeah, so we've got um, we've got all of our, our fields planted with the grass except for uh, the field at the farm, the big corn field. I still need to, to uh, still need to seed the grass there and and roll it. But I also need to do some lime there. And what I was really looking for was uh, was how much do I need to fertilise still? Anything that was uh, planted this month will have one one fertilizer, and uh, anything that was done previously should be should have already been planted with grass and had second fertilizer this month. And that would be that's just been planted. That's just been planted. That's just been planted. So they've had first. That's already had second. That's just been planted from the corn. That needs a second this month. And this has got 
it's already got a layer on it. Okay. So a little little bit of uh, fertilising that needs to be done second. second layer fertiliser. So there's quite a lot of work to be done still. Might have to have a chat with Murphy because I was telling him yesterday that I think we've almost got this wrapped up for the year. I told him that there was only one field left to, fertil uh, to, to harvest here. And then once that's done it's basically the animals. That wasn't quite true. We do have plenty of time though. We've still got this weekend. Uh, we were playing, uh, well, we are playing 21 days at three times speed. But uh, you might notice every now and then um, that uh, the time does change down to one time speed. And that's because, uh, with only Murphy and I on, we're controlling the time a little bit. We are dialing it back so that we've got a full a full day of daylight and not running through the through the nights uh, and working in in the darkness. But we sleep we sleep more often, so. So we have switched it down to one times, but generally speaking, when it gets to the end of the day, we'll sleep and jump jump to the morning. So if we're not on for uh, a couple of days, it's not a big deal. It doesn't skip ahead six days like it would under normal circumstances. Um, and because we've got so much to do with only the two of us playing now, um, the 21 days at three times speed that that works really well if you've got six or eight players playing multiplayer. That works really well. Even four players works really nicely. There's sort of there's generally someone on each day, or if not every second. Um, but with just Murphy and I, it's it's very easy for us to get caught up for two or three days with real life. We'll skip ahead six, nine, twelve days, and uh, we won't get a lot done in that in that time. And uh, yeah, it just gives us a little bit more control. We're still kind of playing uh, basically the same. We kind of end uh, every month on the weekend. Uh, it's Friday night at the moment, so Friday night is a, a general games night for me. It's a regular games night for me. So I, I tend to get on a little bit into the month where uh, a fair bit's been done throughout the week where we've jumped on a couple of times and got some harvesting done. And then on the weekend I can, I can kind of wrap up the month with Murphy and then will start sort of the, the next month on the Monday again, you know. So we're still keeping to the, the 21 day principle of it, of it playing out each week, 21 days. And in, in saying that, that means uh, if we played for another 12 months, we would play for another 12 weeks. Uh, we'll skip ahead the next three months quite quickly because it's winter time um, yeah so so we skip ahead a couple of couple of months here three months through winter we obviously will play winter through probably even at greater speed maybe at five times speed and sleep more regularly And um, I think once we play out uh, the, the end of the third year, we get around to August, we may well have 
We may well have the challenge complete. If you've been following the series, you know the township's been doing quite well. Um, they don't need our help anymore. Um, but we did do some cotton contracts for them this month and last month. Um, didn't seem very profitable for them. In fact, they made something ridiculous like $15,000 from um, from cotton contracts, but spent twenty five thousand dollars in leasing the um, the harvester. It's about ten thousand dollars an hour for them to use that harvester. A hell of a lot cheaper, by the way, though, than buying it. Even if even if you do spend for those two months that cotton's ready. Even if you do spend twenty-five thousand a month, it is only fifty thousand dollars for the year, and uh, the cotton harvesters are half a million dollars. So, you know, it you break even points around about ten years of leasing, um, and we knew that we weren't going to play ten years, so made more sense for the township to just lease the uh, cotton harvester.
So we've finished the harvest now and I've just realised I'm driving up to my oil mill but this is not our canola. It's a contract and uh, I just flicked on the mini map and I've got an exclamation mark there which is the northern green cell point just up the road up here so um, I don't need to go into the menu to find out where I'm going to gives me the the exclamation mark on the and this is the only contract on the map so I know that it's this cell point just up ahead of us here The going rule is about 10% on the map for leftovers for contracts. If you're not getting 10%, there's something going wrong. Um, we are playing hard economy. Uh, let's do the trailer first. We'll dump the whole trailer. So this is 40,000 litres, still in the harvester is 5. So I would almost bet that we won't get, well, 10% of 45 is 4,500. So I don't think we'll get the 5,000 that's in, that's in the harvester. I think we'll be, get probably a little less than that. But just in case, I will slow down probably at the end here. So I will run down to the last couple of thousand. About 2,000 left there. I wasn't expecting the contract to finish, but what I will do is I will... That little flash at the bottom of the screen there was me changing the grain door, so we'll get a little grain door here. Nope. I was prepared to stop it if it came up contract complete, but it didn't. And I don't think it should have either. I think we probably need to deliver about 500 more based on the 10% rule. I drove all the way around and all I had to do was up the street there. Look at that. I just thought I was taking it to my oil mill. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll go and grab the last little bit out of the harvester. I would imagine we're at 99%. Contracts, 99%. Only needs about 500. Anyway, I will drop the 500 into the sell point. I will collect the 6,000. I'll take the 4,500 down to the canola and I'll process that. And I'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. I hope you enjoyed the episode and I'll see you next time. <laughs>